All right, check this out. This is a very rough build, uh, loosely based on something that I have in the game right now that I built to test enzyme missile racks. And this weapon is one of the more interesting in the game because it's the only human weapon available that inflicts caustic damage. Um, so I thought actually I would accomplish two objectives with this video. The first is to talk about the enzyme missile rack, and the second is to try to revise a previous video that I've done on the corrosive shell experimental effect. Another separate viewer of mine pointed out that I made a mistake talking about it and left out that the corrosive shell, the experimental effect that you can apply to some kinetic weapons, actually increases all incoming damage by 25%, which changes the way that you uh, changes the situations in which you would apply the, that experimental compared to other ships in the game. So I'm going to start by talking about the enzyme missile rack, and then I will end by talking about the corrosive shell. The enzyme missile rack was introduced shortly after Thargoids were into the game as a human tech broker weapon that would enable you to apply the same type of caustic damage that Thargoid ships do. When it was originally implemented, FDEV actually made it very similar to the uh, caustic missiles that were launched by the Thargoid ships. Although the enzyme missile rack has always been a dumb fire weapon, it hasn't always been as garbage as it is right now. Originally, the caustic damage could stack, and I guess I'm going to have to have a viewer quote me on this because I'm not entirely sure if I remember this correctly, but as it was originally implemented, I think it could penetrate shields. So penetrate shields and stack damage, making it essentially identical to what the Thargoids were launching, but without the ability to track targets like interceptor missiles could. Uh, that made it, for a short period of time, one of the best weapons in the game. It goes and directly attacks the hull of whatever ship you hit it with, ignoring all resistances. Meaning that it provided an incentive for commanders to start uh, applying some of the meta alloy and guardian reinforcements to try to get caustic resistance up. But it was also at the same time so powerful that if you could get four or five direct hits on a target over a period of time, uh, you could really mess them up. Same dynamics as Thargoid fights were in effect. You either had to decontaminate your hull to get rid of the corrosive damage, or you had to overheat. So it lasted about a week or two, and then FDEV came in and they adjusted the enzyme missile rack and made a bunch of changes to it. Assuming that I'm right about it originally penetrating shields, I didn't have this at the time, I didn't get to use it when it was OP. Um, FDEV went in and adjusted it so that it couldn't penetrate shields, as it stands right now, and so that the caustic damage it applies could not stack. They also made the damage output rate, I think, lower than what an actual Thargoid missile would impart. So the minute you tap their hull, it's the minimum possible amount of caustic damage to apply the effect, and it persists for about a minute. But unlike the Thargoid missile, uh, if you don't continue to get hits on the target after about a minute, the caustic effect goes away. The, ship, the, the target ship doesn't have to overheat, the target ship doesn't have to do anything. If you don't continue to get active hits on target, then the missile stops working, and the target ship stops taking damage, which took it from one of the best weapons in the game to one of the worst weapons in the game. And as it stands right now, it is only fun for the lulls, because the amount of sacrifices you have to make to apply it are substantial, and since shield tanks are the meta and this can't penetrate shields, so you've got an entire medium-sized hardpoint on your build that basically just sits there and does nothing. And even when it does something, if the target ship has more than a thousand points of absolute hull, it's going to take you a long time to get through that hole. With 750 meters per second, you have to be right up in their face to be able to get consistent hits. However, the Ensign Missile Rack has one distinct advantage that enables it to, because it's doing absolute damage, very quickly erode the hulls of resistance-based builds that don't have very high absolute hull resistance but might have very high um, explosive kinetic and thermal resistances. The enzyme missile rack is most effective against the ships that are the hardest to hit and that you wouldn't ever generally try to use it against. Um, trying to hit a small ship with a dump fire missile of any kind is an exercise in frustration. These stats are absolutely pathetic. 2.5 damage per second, that's the chip damage with 5 damage per shot and only a piercing value of 60. Um, this does not apply corrosive effects to the target, so you're not getting a damage increase from your other weapons. I, I wouldn't run it on any of my ship builds, except maybe as a meme. And after I'm done with this test, I'm, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to not use it at all. I don't recommend commanders play with this weapon 
I really don't recommend that you try to make it work because the amount of stuff you have to do in order to use it is just not combat effective. Now I think FDEV could fix this if they allowed this weapon a nominal stacking effect, maybe cap it out so that you can only have two or three stacks of enzyme damage, and that might make it relevant because for each stack you're dealing more damage. Now you're up to uh, seven and a half DPS, and if you had it fade off over time down to its base and then eventually go away, I think that this would become a more popular weapon. I don't know what to do about the shields though. If you make it so that it breaches shields, well, now you've got another really powerful tool against shields and it would incentivize more people to use it, but I'm not sure how broken that would make everything. So I guess leave your comments on that below. We'll move on to the corrosive effect, which um, I'd done in a previous video that's now unlisted. I'm going to leave it unlisted because of the mistake I made. Uh, the corrosive shell effect is only relevant on some specific kinetic weapons, the most popular of which is the multi-cannon and the fragment cannon. I think there might be a couple of others that have it, but I, I don't have them memorized off the top of my head. Um, but what corrosive shell does is lower the target armor hardness and then increase the amount of damage taken by 25%. There's a couple of assets and resources you can go to understand this better. Um, this is the wiki page, but it describes it in detail. Armor hardness is the armor rating and it's an innate characteristic of, of your ship's hull. And this is a chart that lists out all of the uh, intrinsic armor hardnesses of the different hulls, with the Type 10 Defender being the current thickest in the game. You have to understand how piercing works to understand why that matters. Um, every weapon in the game is assessed a certain piercing value. Uh, medium multi-cannon has a piercing of 59. Um, every weapon has its own piercing value that you can actually modify with engineering um, effects. For example, uh, the Fragment Cannon is famous for having absolutely dog crap piercing at 30, which means that the Fragment Cannon will only do its full standard DPS uh, to anything smaller than an Imperial Courier. So a bunch of the small ships are really vulnerable to this weapon, but you do have to get really close in order for it to be effective. I'll switch to a larger ship to illustrate this in, in more, uh, more detail overall. Let's see. This is my energy-based Type 10 Defender. This isn't exactly what I have running in the game right now, but it's close. Uh, and you'll notice that all of my lasers are running the Focus Grade 5 Experimental, or sorry, Focus Grade 5 Engineering Blueprint. And the piercing up here is 114, and then you've got 77 down here in the mediums. And then I have multi cannons down here, one running emissive munitions to prevent people from popping a heat sink and vanishing from radar, and then the other is corrosive shell. Over here, if I were to take this Type 10 and attack a Ferdy Lance, with this build. Uh, Fertilance has an armor hardness of 70, one of the highest in the game. It's right up there with the Corvette, and the Mamba, and the Cutter. Any weapon with a piercing value below the armor hardness of the target ship will suffer a debuff uh, proportional to the difference between the piercing value and the armor hardness. This is a one-way relationship, meaning you only suffer a debuff if you are attacking a ship with thicker armor. If, as is the case with my Type 10, your piercing value exceeds the armor hardness of the target ship, you're not getting damage bonuses, doesn't give you more ability to target modules. Uh, it just enables you to do all of the DPS that's applied here um, before resistances. That's the thing. Um, in Elite Dangerous, there's a hierarchy of calculations that determine your actual applied DPS. The first is damage falloff, which for pulse lasers is a half a kilometer. The game will take your DPS off the top based on how far the target is. Um, since shields don't have hardness, all of the remainder after falloff gets applied to the shields um, with resistances accounted for. So you fire, you take damage, fall off, it hits the shields, the game looks at the remaining damage, looks at the resistances, and then takes whatever damage off the top to apply resistance dam to, to apply the final damage to the shields. Once the shields are down, you attack the hull. Um, if your, your damage falloff gets accounted for, and then you hit the hull, and if you're not doing absolute damage and pulse lasers do thermal, then the game looks at the thermal resistance and applies uh, a debuff based on the integrity of your thermal resistance. And it's in that order. It's fall off, then it's armor, and then it's resistances to come up with a final applied damage. Corrosive shell goes in and it makes sure that um, weapons like the multi-cannon, which you can see here have a piercing of 22, when attacking a Ferdy Lance, can apply more of their effective damage than they otherwise would. The article goes into a lot of detail, uh, and 
gives you actually a great example of a mining laser, which is the weakest of all standard module piercing of 18. If you use it against a Type 10 Defender, it will only inflict 24% of its stated damage potential. Um, the Kaido Scrambler is another weapon that, that demonstrates this aptly. It has a piercing of 1, um, which means that only 1.33 to about 5% of its damage is rendered against the hull of a target ship, no matter what you do to it. And there's really not anything you can do to get that piercing value up. Even when it's focused, I think you end up with a piercing value of 2 or 3. Um, so when you're looking for a way to apply the corrosive shell experimental effect right here, um, you want to... You'll want to have it on any build, really, because of the damage uh, buff that it gives you, about 25%. Because most of my weapons have a maximum piercing value, um, I'm not... I'm going to do more damage because of the 25% buff, but it's not going to be as great a benefit as, for example, this Vulture's going to get, where with a piercing value of 52 and 54, um, if I'm trying to attack something like a Ferdy Lance that has a value of 70, um, these weapons are going to suffer a debuff, and they're not going to do their stated DPS on Coriolis. So to get around that on this Vulture, I... Well, this Pulse Laser is running Scramble Spectrum, but this uh, Multi Cannon is running Corrosive Shell. And what that does is Corrosive Shell very specifically goes in, and it knocks this value down by 20. So a Fertilance will have an effective armor of 50 while the experimental is being applied, and that takes your size 3 weapons and it allows them to do, their, to do their full stated DPS on paper to the hull before resistances are applied. So resistances will still count against this. But then the corrosive shell effect goes in and it increases your damage output by 25%. So instead of dealing 22.6, you basically go in and times that by um, 0.25 and then add the value back in. And, and what this will end up doing is, is probably somewhere up in the high 20s. And right here, you'll get something in the uh, high th in the high 30s, where they're kind of low on both counts right now. Um, it is a very powerful experimental effect to apply. If you're running multi cannons on your build, absolutely, you should have one of them running corrosive shell. However, corrosive shell does not stack, so there's no point running it on anything on, on more than one hard point, and actually. Um, most people who are doing complex builds, like on my Type 10 I was showing you earlier, uh, bring it back up here, it has the same benefit on a size 1 hardpoint as it would on a large, but the larges have other experimental effects that, um, that can be applied. So most people will stick it on their size 1 just to proc the engineering effect, and then they'll take that size 1 hardpoint and they'll high capacity it, for example, like I have right here to make up for the 20% loss, or sorry, 40% loss in ammunition maximum that you have to suffer in order to stick it on. Although I think that might be uh, exaggerated by the blueprint that I'm having. I can have somebody check that later. If someone wants to check that and correct me in the comments, feel free. And this is another chart below that tells you what the different piercing ratings are without having to go into Coriolis. Torpedoes are, are one of the most ridiculous, but they're also one of the most impractical. I'll do a separate video on those. Um, they're almost as impractical as the uh, caustic missile, unfortunately. There's an equation, so you can calculate this yourself if you want to, but this is it right here. If you feel like doing a little math in an Excel spreadsheet, you can plug different weapons in and get everything figured out. But that's the equation that the game uses in order to figure out how much of a debuff you're going to suffer. And this article is actually really useful. If you guys want to uh, really read into this and then get into the spreadsheets and figure out what the most effective way to deal damage is, because there's a lot of different approaches and they're all kind of... Uh, uh, well, it, it depends on your play style. I won't, I won't try to confine people to one particular style of play because I certainly have my own. Um, but I recommend reading this. I recommend becoming familiar with these charts because you're going to want to know how the armor hardness works when you're selecting targets to attack in the game. Um, since larger targets with smaller weapons require more ammo to make up the difference, and if you're running kinetics then you do have to be careful with ammunition and endurance. Um, that's all I got for today, guys, so I'll catch you later.